What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage. And today we're continuing the wiring on my Haltech 914. Warning, this video contains wiring. Viewer discretion advised for those that use carburetors. All right, tonight's the night. No more stalling, no more delays. We're gonna start putting the harness in the car. I got some answers to some questions I had in the last video, and I know what ignition outputs I need. I know what I need for a tack signal. So I ended up removing one more and adding one more pin back. I can change this later, but honestly, once I build the harness, I don't really wanna to have to add extra branches here. So uh, the harness is gonna get plugged in the car, and then we're gonna go ahead and trim everything to length, make sure I'm happy with it. And then I've got some really nice insulotherm from wirecare.com that I'm gonna start running the wires in. So I got quarter inch, three eighths, and an inch, probably an inch to put up here where the uh, complete harness is. And then I got a really sweet shrink wrap kit that is three to one shrink ratio. So I'll be able to shrink like a connector and a wire or whatever I need. So cool little kit. It was about a little less than 50 bucks, um, but something I'm gonna use for a long time. So I got my diagrams, I got my connectors. Um, so the ECU is in place. It is in its home and I am happy with that. So the ECU is looking good in there and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start laying that harness in and then jumping on problems as they come. I think we've got a pretty good solid plan. This is the part that I've been regretting uh, or delaying, uh, but we're gonna get after it and see how we can do. So let's overview this as best as possible here. I've got my ECU and my ECU connector, and I've kind of divided everything into the branches that it's gonna be in. Now, this isn't everything. I don't have the uh, power wires for the injector. I don't exactly know where my um, air valve or my uh, idle air controller is gonna go. And I have some wires that I'm not gonna use. So let's just start over here at the ECU and go out. So ECU, this is the CAN connector if we uh, use that for anything else. There is gonna be a branch that comes over towards the general vicinity of the relay board. So power in. Uh, this is gonna be a fuel pump trigger, which I'll just hit right onto the relay board. And then this purple wire is actually gonna be uh, the computer output of the tax signal. And I've gotta use a tax signal conditioner. Uh, and then that's gonna input uh, back into uh, my main connection here on the relay board from the stock system. So that basically makes the digital output of the computer look like a negative coil tax signal. So coming up this way, we are gonna have a small branch for the two injectors here. Still need to put the power wire in here. And our next branch is gonna come up to, sorry, uh, the throttle valve, TPS, air intake temp sensor, and I'm hoping that right here on the side of the air box, I can mount that air uh, intake idle air control valve. So I'm gonna kind of bring these up here. Uh, down here in the front, I have uh, outputs for 12 volt stuff coming out of the ECU, and I have so uh, ground and signal five volt for other sensors. I'm gonna probably just uh, terminate these and just put them away as cleanly as I can. I'm not planning to use those right now, but I might in the future. Coming across, we have the crank trigger and the cam sync. Now I mentioned it before, I'm not gonna do a cam sync uh, right now. I'm gonna run Wasted Spark, but I'm gonna just go ahead and run this in the wiring so it's there. All I have to do is peel the sheathing back and hook up the cam sync if I want it. Um, and then I'm gonna take the rest of those across the top of the engine, battery ground, ignition outputs, and we have two other things here, the two injectors on the far side, and then our plug for the modified cylinder head temp sensor. So that's what we're looking at. I'm gonna try to find some wire so that we can go ahead and get the injector power in there and take a look at where that's gonna go. And then we'll start coating this up and uh, I'll probably put the heat shrink in old place, but I won't heat shrink until everything is happy and everything is connected. I'd really like to not have to do this like six times, but we probably will. So uh, let's see if we can find some wire and keep going. All right, I got some wire after the visit to four parts stores 
and we have added in power for a couple of things that are not powered by the ECU, which um, I didn't totally understand until I've done a little more research. So you need to supply 12 volt switch power to each injector. That's all four. You need to supply 12 volt switch power to your coil. And in my case, I'm gonna be using a idle air control stepper motor, and I'm actually gonna use one of those gray and red keyed powers off of the ECU. It seems like it's not a ton of amp draw. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and basically put that into the harness. I'm gonna have that uh, power for those two things come off some relays that I'll probably put back here. And I'm gonna have that join the harness basically kind of right here at the first junction. So I went ahead and made myself a diagram, excuse my kindergarten handwriting here. So the ECU is here and I've mapped out what each branch is and then I'm gonna work backwards to put sheathing on each of these. So ECU here, we're gonna have a short section where the whole wiring harness is. There will be a patch that comes in from the relay board, and that is where the uh, power comes in for the coil and for the injectors. We'll have it come out to one and two. We'll have some of those non-use sensor and uh, uh, 12 volt switched outputs here. We'll come up to the middle with a pretty big bundle for the TPS, the idle air control, and the air temp sensor. It'll come out for the crank sensor. I decided to leave the camp sensor cut to length. It's just gonna get wrapped in here. We'll have our power and two ignition outputs to the coil. Uh, we'll have the ground to the battery going all the way across. We'll have one short branch to injectors three and four, and one more branch to the cylinder head temp sensor. So the only things that I have added to this uh, since we last looked at it is I did go ahead and put AVI three back in, which is this yellow wire. Uh, and I'm gonna use that to go inside the car to the wideband controller that I already have. And so I can input that straight into the computer. All right, quick side note on injector power. I did a little bit of research on this. And what I have is one 18 gauge wire coming into four 20 gauge wires. I've seen some people say 22, some, some people say 16, but 18 gauge uh, connected here with a un uh, uninsulated connector. And then I've got double layer heat shrink going to four 20 gauges coming out two here and two there for the injector. So quick little harness that I made and uh, this heat shrink is super nice. I did find these uninsulated rollover connectors and I need a little bit better crimp tool, uh, but it's a good way to split out that injector power. All right, I have the harness laid out for the 12,000th time I've gone through it. I know this may be uh, commonplace for some of you guys that have done this before, but this is my first time putting something like this together. So um, I've gone through every single connection, every circuit multiple times. And now we're gonna start with this insole therm. It's super nice and thick, uh, holds its shape pretty well. Uh, this is awesome looking stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically cut branch pieces here. And then when I have joints, uh, we will use heat shrink to close uh, where the wires come out rather than cutting a hole in this where it could potentially fray. Um, I wish I had like a hot knife or something to cut this. So now I've got to take this piece to the end and feed it all through to get my first piece in. Uh, and so I'm going to work on the main branch and then we can back feed all the small pieces in. Let's do it.
right, that was some serious work and brain power to make sure I get this right. You can see a lot of the heat shrinks just kind of taped generally where it's going to go, but uh, I've gotten sheathing to approximately where the wires are going to go. It's going to, I'm going to put it in the car and we'll do a final fitment. I have not shielded anything over here. This is going to be an easy one before I heat shrink this. Just kind of tuck it up under there and uh, we'll figure out how this needs to branch out. A couple of these go to relays, a couple of these go to other stuff. So um, I did remove the stock stuff that came with it just so it all looked the same this is way beefier and more dense than that so we'll heat shrink it here 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 here, all the way down so uh coming out here this is the ground wire i will probably also sneak a piece of shielding in here if i can um so we've got our injectors and our temp sensor our coil crank trigger our sensors for uh the air temp the tps and the idle air control our two injectors on this side or unused portion. I think what I'm gonna do is take a piece of this one inch heat shrink, just heat shrink it, zip tie it right there. It'll just kind of be a little bulb as part of the harness. And then if I ever wanna use these sensors, um, then I can just basically cut the heat shrink back and I'm ready to go. It's already in the loom, no big deal. Um, so I'm very happy with that. It's looking really good. And now, so let's test it in the car. I feel like I keep showing the same thing, but every time we do this, there's a little bit of progress. So the harness lays in here super nice. I'm not sure if I'm gonna run it up here or maybe back here. Uh, I haven't determined that yet, but I've got enough room for either things. Plenty of room on these. I'm gonna wait to terminate these until the throttle body's in and the air intake is on so I can get that tuning, that a length just right. Also until I place that idle air control, which I'm hoping to be about here, but I gotta wait till it gets here. Uh, these injector wires should have plenty of room, especially if the harness just comes back a little bit. I did go ahead and add a little piece here. I'm gonna probably have this come up underneath the relay board to whatever other relays tapping into here that needs to happen. Um, great connection on the coil, perfect on the crank trigger. And then our other injectors, other injectors will connect on there. And I'll probably pull this temp sensor down underneath the plenum and connect that in as well. So the ground wire I may grab right here on the case. Uh, I would like to inquire, like, does it have to have to go to the battery? Because it goes right here from my ground strap, straight to the body, straight to the battery. So if that's the case, I will save an extra wire going across the side. So at this point, the things that are in their home and I'm happy with them, injectors, coil, temp sensor, um, those kind of things, I'm going to start terminating them. And uh, I think our next thing will be to get the TPS set up. Um, I got the aluminum today. And uh, hopefully, once we get that in the car, uh, we can terminate those last couple of sensors. And it's going to be some relays and just some tidying up. And then we'll be looking at uh, where to go from there. So uh, we're going to leave it off there for the Barefoot Garage. As always, stay tuned here on YouTube for weekly Wednesday videos, give or take around noon. And in between episodes at Barefoot Garage Jacks over on Instagram. See you guys.